responsible for a lot of extremely popular reality shows like Here Comes Honey Boo Boo, Flipping Out, Interior Therapy, Toddlers and Tiaras. Um, you know, produced for a number of leading networks like Discovery, The Food Network, National Geographic. And really, you know, they've been uh, a very, very close partner and a customer of ours in, in helping us develop some leading technology and some leading workflows, uh, especially for the post-production side of things. And, uh, you know, the, the person behind all of those workflows is really Will, uh, who's our guest speaker today. Uh, you know, Will has over 12 years of experience in post-production. He's been a post, pro, uh, post supervisor in Super Delicious, Alison Gardner, over six years at Authentic, and uh, you know his career highlights include building out a uh, 45 edit bay post facility for over 100 users, and you know Will currently oversees all the post production uh, operations at Authentic, and uh, you know with that I'd like to you know thank him for uh, you know coming here and, and sharing his workflow with all of us, and uh, you know I'll hand it over to Will now. So. All right, thank you very much, TC. Hi everyone, thanks for coming down. Um, I just kind of want to go over our workflow and how we use this great product, Storage DNA's DNA Evolution LTO5. Um, so basically what's going on is uh, in 2009, Authentic Entertainment uh, embarked on shooting its first show entirely file-based. At that time, um, we were archiving everything to GTEC uh, storage drives. We were shooting a show for Oxygen called The Naughty Kitchen, and um, we had four Sony EX3 cameras sent out to Dallas. We sent 62 terabyte drives. Half of them were primary drives, half of them were backup drives, so we were just shipping them back and forth. And during transit, drives would break. It just seemed like a very unstable workflow. So that year came out to the NAB looking for a new storage solution that was we felt was safer than FireWire Drive. We were an early adopter of um, LTO technology. We uh, started with a product um, with LTO4, and then um, as our workflow started to evolve, we realized that we needed something more user-friendly, um, more something that could evolve with our workflows, not a product that we were trying to adapt to. We wanted a product that was going to evolve with us. So um, our friends at Keycode Media introduced us to this new product called DNA Evolution. We had already been using Storage DNA's uh, DNA Sync program. It's a near-line archive uh, storage solution we back up our entire Facilis Terablock server to that DNA sync, uh, through using DNA sync to our near line storage system. So, since we were really happy with storage DNA's DNA sync, we felt like it was a natural progression to give Evolution a shot. Um, what we found uh, with storage DNA's Evolution was uh, a very fast um, archive and uh, restore solution that was five times faster than our current LTO4 system. The challenge that we were facing as we were looking for the new product, um, we were basically looking for something to automate our archive um, and conform process, and obviously wanted to spend a lot less time working in the LTO software. Our last product, we would spend days, myself, assistant editors, trying to verify that we had gotten all of our contents onto the tape. Um, the restore process never really seemed fully uh, realized at the point that we were using it. Um, and on top of that, if you're shooting file based, most of you probably know, um, if you're, you're working with um, some of the other LTO products, you have to bring back the entire card that you had shot, the entire SYS card, the entire compact flash card. It's a lot of storage you need for the restore process. Um, with the help of storage DNA, we've been able to kind of change that. Uh, we were evolved that workflow where we're just bringing back the clips that we need and the index files so that Avid can link properly to just those clips. So what was once a five terabyte restore that took 48 hours, now takes four to five hours and is about one terabyte. And from there, once we get everything to our server, we then transcode everything down to a smaller size for the online editor to work with. Um, some of the other challenges that we were facing, we wanted to obviously reduce our rental costs. We were uh, archiving. Um, a lot, of, I guess not archiving, we were dubbing a lot of our Air Masters to um, 
backed HD cam SR tapes we were sending up off-site. We called them Vault Master clones in case there was a fire at our vault. We kind of eliminated that whole workflow, saved us tens of thousands of dollars by uh, archiving all of our Air Masters now to LTO tape. And actually, a lot of the networks we're working for are all file-based delivery. We just upload everything. So we archive those shows entirely to two different LTO tapes. One's a clone of the other one. The clone goes off-site and stays at a post-production facility. Um, we also wanted a system that was not revolving around to our local network. We wanted it basically tied into our Facilis TerraBlock system. This uh, product integrated seamlessly into our SAN. Uh, we have three um, of the uh, storage DNA clients right now. All of them are a single fiber client connected into our Facilis system. So the cool thing about it is when you're looking at the interface, you've got the um, catalog database on your left and you can see all the Facilis drives on your right. You can easily, you'll know, um, you know, let's say you have a job for toddlers and TRs, you can easily see that toddlers was mounted and you could uh, attach that drive into the catalog, which I'll show you during the demo. Um, the last but not least, tech support. For authentic entertainment, tech support is everything. We want to be able to call someone, we want them to be able to work with us on the phone, we also want to see what they're doing. So. We do, it's very simple. We have TeamViewer on all of our clients. Storage DNA logs in. Uh, we see what they're doing. And then they teach us if we made a mistake, how to fix it going forward. Um, most of our calls to tech support usually is file deletion. We put something on LTO we didn't want to be there. So we're calling them up, asking them to remove something. Our uh, storage DNA, we have two of the 24 by loaders. Um, one of them has two drives in it, which means it can run two jobs simultaneously. The other one just has one drive. Then we have two single loaders, which you use for very quick restore uh, jobs, where we want to just restore one or two files for a promo rubber, something like that. Um, they're all very easy to use. Um, like I said, we use TeamViewer uh, to uh, troubleshoot, but we also use it uh, for training. So when I was learning how to use uh, this new product. They did it over Team Viewer. They logged in and in an hour or two they taught me how to use the product. Then a couple nights later I took my staff of 25, went into the conference room, logged into our uh, server, and basically took everyone through it. And that night we were archiving and restoring files. It was very easy actually. Uh, this is very important. We wanted to automate our backups. Okay? When I say automate, I mean I literally go in, I set up all of the archives, I'll create an archive called Toddlers and Tiaras, I'll call one called Honey Boo Boo, flipping out, and then I'll set it, I want Toddlers to back up at 3 a.m., I want Honey Boo Boo to back up at 4, I want flipping out at 5, and on and on. We're right now we have nine series, every single one automates to an LTO tape every single night. 100% of our shows, 150 hours a year, go on to LTO 5 tape using Storage Days DNA Evolution product. The product obviously, it supports every file-based format you can think of. We're working with all of these, P2, S by S, GoPro. The Canon C300 is our primary camera. We shoot 50% of all of our reality shows on it at this point. Um, we have a very, uh, unique workflow for how we uh, we manage it, but um, I'll show you in a demo uh, the droplets that you use uh, to restore um, custom cameras. So let's say you're shooting a show that's Canon C300, P2, GoPro. You would have a drop-down menu that has those three cameras in it, and then the software will know to grab the files associated with those cameras during your restore. The result, um, obviously, we increased our archive and restore speeds astronomically, five times the speed. We've hit gigabit speeds. Um, we could restore a one-hour show somewhere between four to five hours. Um, archives, like I said, are all automated. So once you do the big push to get your initial bulk media onto tape, it's just a syncing process. It could be done anywhere between 15 to an hour. It doesn't take very long. Obviously, uh, significant monthly cost savings, uh, reduced labor costs, well, less assistant editors needed, um, more time doing you know, grouping, uh, up-resing, uh, less time focused, troubleshooting software. Um, 
uh, yeah, I mean, ultimately, uh, also we uh, reduced our rental costs. We don't have, we don't need two decks anymore. We've reduced greatly the amount of tape stock that we bought. And last but not least, we've ultimately kicked out all the firewire drives from our facility. Um, and then uh, I'm going to show you a, a quick demo. Uh, I'm going to show you, this is a new show that we're doing for what was the G4 television channels, now Esquire. We're doing a new show with Drew Barrymore called The Night Fight. It's all shot on the Canon C300 and the GoPro cameras. Everything is archived to DNA Evolution and it restored. And when I mean restored, we're rebuilding these episodes five, six times because the network is changing your mind so often. And this software has been there with us since day one. So this is just kind of a small sample of what we do at Authentic Entertainment. We call all of our archives LTO and then the three digit show code. So Night Fight was once called Food Fight Club, so it's LTO. FFC, which is our show code name. Click on the archive, and then now I can show you everything that's been archived to tape and how we keep it organized. Basically, um, these three folders here represent um, one of uh, each of our facilis volumes where the media is stored. So the tapeless volume is where all the raw camera files go. See, uh, we store the camera raw files, go into this folder. These are all the dates that we shot. These are our uh, tape numbers. And then uh, you'll see the contents folder from the uh, Canon C300 camera. This is the clip folder. And now you can see the clip is here. You can see what tape it was archived to. We also archive all of our high-res graphics, our high-res stills for the show. Um, we had some ProRes files that we archived because we ran into some glitches with our GoPro. So rather than keeping them in their raw state, we converted them. We also archive all of the uh, editor's projects every single day. So you can see um, uh, the different the editors, the story, um, the AE projects, the music, everything's inside of here. Everything goes automat automatically to LTO tape every single night. And now these are also going to three different tapes as well. So inside the auto loader, we're not mixing them up. You're not getting camera raw project files all on the same tape. It's assigned to three different tapes. Um, we have audio as well. This is just our uh, uh, backup audio. With the Canon C300, there's um, a lot of audio glitches with it, so we end up doing a lot of syncing with the 78 backup up masters so we back up everything here as well you'll see the wave files are all these specific tapes and I'll show you our restore process which I think is really cool it's very unique it's very very user friendly so this is the main restore window it's very new um, very simply you would just go add a ticket and then you would browse for what we do is an AE will export an AAF uh, from our Avid sequence of the locked cut, they'll give either my myself or the post supervisor, if we're not around to load it themselves, but they give it to us um, in a specific location. Uh, we basically browse for that AF. For this, it's uh, it's in this uh, demo area. So that authentic demo AF, imagine that's a Facilis TeraBlock volume. On there, there's going to be nothing but the AAF and a media folder where the media is going to restore to. So we would select that. And then, like I was talking about earlier, there's unique drop-down menus to this software that basically reflect the, the types of cameras you're using. So for this demo, um, Night Fight uses the uh, Canon C300 and the GoPro, so that's exactly what our drop-down looks like at Authentic. So we would choose that one. And then you want to do the custom restore. So this is the location on your shared media server or your FireWire drive, wherever you want to restore to. And then we're just choosing. Uh, on our facilities, we call our volumes that we restore to restore volumes with the show code. 
Okay, and you just hit Add Restore. It's processing it now. So this is going to take a, just a couple of minutes. It usually takes about two to three minutes, and it starts to build a tape list, and then it spits out um, under the tape used area. It'll list out all the LTO tapes, and then the ones that pop up that are in red are the ones that are not currently loaded in your auto loaders. The ones that are green are in your auto loaders at this time. Um, normally we keep all of our tapes in our vault. We don't really keep them in there um, because we have a lot of tapes in there for archiving. Um, it'll pop up soon. Yeah. yeah so, um, I don't really have much else to go on. Should I go into questions at this point? Okay. So, um, Scott? ISIS and you have four, what, what do you have, four or five, four, four workspaces, does that mean it's four to five hours per workspace to restore? No, it's just, it's just total time. So basically one restore, depending on how fast your connection is, like I said, we pay gigabit speed. Um, the entire, if you're going to one workspace, you're going to five workspaces, it's going to take about four to five hours. Well, we've pushed about 400 to 500 gigs per hour. So depending, so yeah, four hours for two terabytes. So that's in, uh, on a, you know, it, it fluctuates a little bit, but it's uh, it's it, it, like I said, it's about five times faster than our original LTO four system. Two days, 48 hours. I, uh, I, that's a, a, a realistic estimate, and I mean we. Yeah, I mean it, it, it was a, a tough. I mean we had to when a show was, when we estimated a show was going to lock on a Friday, we started restoring those files when we were in LTO four on a Wednesday, and then by Friday we had ninety five percent of it back, and then there was a few stragglers that we'd have to go get. But this system kind of eliminates the need to go searching through catalogs for files, you're just loading your AAF and telling it to pull everything that was in that lock sequence. Okay, um, if, so it finished uh, choosing the files, so like I said, those are the tapes, those are actually our six digit barcodes, and we would just go to our vault, grab those tapes and load them into the auto loader, and then simply you would choose to restore those files in this menu over here. And then, so, here, well, it doesn't have the, uh, the play button. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it doesn't have the play button, but normally there would be a, a, like a play button, like a VCR play button, you hit play. Oh, you moved it? Okay, so sorry, I'm kind of new with this interface, it's very new. Uh, but yeah, so that would start the job going, just, just like that. And also, if, um, if you hit start and uh, something is wrong, it'll email you right away, like within a couple seconds, and tell you that there's a problem. It also clearly identifies what the problem is, so you can quickly troubleshoot it. Yes. Yes, exactly. It will stop and start um, where you left off, which is fantastic. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's actually um, a good point. Uh, we like to back up all of our um, uh, offline media to LTO 5 
King. So we were just finishing a show called Auction Kings on Discovery Channel recently. In the event that uh, the show gets picked up and we want to go back and um, bring back some legacy scenes for flashbacks or deleted scenes, we need to relink. Now this is a Fonica Pro show, so we need to relink our multi-clip project. They don't like to relink very well when you're re-digitizing the DVC Pro tapes over and over again. So we actually archive all of the low-res proxies to LTO tape. You're talking about 13 terabytes, uh, 9, 10 LTO tapes. Obviously, we'll start the job on a Monday and finish later in that week. We need to stop and start it throughout the week as you know the decks are, or the appliances are needed. So it's a good way to how we use the start and stop features. Um, questions? Uh, we do it for our show opens. So in terms of red camera, we use it primarily for just show open sequences. So you're talking about one terabytes a day. Oh yeah. So that's like one process that's happening. Is that? that what we'd like to be able to do? Ideally, it would be open those shows from the effects from this nearline LTO storage instead of having to keep that on spinning disks. So our three are notoriously touchy bar, and a lot of things where they store the RMDs. Where the things can get lost in the three D only makes it only that much more complicated. That's a crazy time. I've got lost in my head. So it's just a lot of data. That's something I'd be interested to see. If you know, we can actually conform pieces out of or do a high effects pull that way. I mean, I can't. I don't have a demo set up, but I did back up. Um, uh, I consulted on a feature film that came out last year called Fortress. It's a World War II fighter plane movie. It had 350 CGI shots in it, and if you know CGI, there's a million revisions, especially with planes. I was working with Radical 3D in uh, Venice, and we archived everything using. The, I did it on the weekends on my own time to uh, DNA Evolution, and then um, as changes came in, I would restore files to a FireWire drive for them, send them back over to their office, and uh, we were able to work that way. And uh, so yeah, we, we've done a lot of CGI work, at least I've done it outside of Authentic. Yes, you can export your database, your catalog out of this or out of your field unit. Let's say you're using as a one beyond unit, I think they're starting they're starting to work with now. You can export it out of the one beyond and then put it into your uh, catalog at your office and it should sync up just fine. Offer to take questions. Offer to take questions after. Okay. Um, any more questions? Um, so if, if that's it, uh, then I'll uh, be around to answer more questions uh, outside of this uh, presentation. But I just want to thank everyone for coming. Awesome.